everybody. It's uh, Dr. Rick uh, dropping in on you. I wish I could say it was on a more positive note. Uh, my goal this morning or my plans this morning was actually to address the importance of racial socialization based off of an interview that Tyler Perry did where he said he hasn't had a talk with his seven-year-old son about race uh, because his son doesn't see his friends, quote unquote, uh, any different. Uh, and I was going to talk about the importance of racial socialization and as well as why we can't continue to look to celebrities to be the solution to our enigmatic issues and uh, the difference between success in one's career and a awareness of true cultural, social, political uh, realities is completely different. And then um, a story came across my desk that totally knocked the wind out of me. Uh, it's placing me in the same place where I need to talk about the importance of uh, racial socialization for our youth, especially black males, but um, from a different perspective and a different reason. Um, a story is definitely horrifying. I'm looking at it now, and I've gone over it several times, and it's no way you can make this make sense to me. Um, basically, a 25-year-old black male picked up his two-year-old daughter from daycare. It is obviously, her name is Avaya Marie. Uh, bless her heart, rest her soul. He picked her up. Her mom, Kariston Watson, had to work. His name is, if I can find it, DeAndre Flanagan. He picks her up, and obviously they've broken up, and the mom is seeing somebody else. And he basically goes by her job at Walmart, takes her phone, and tells her if she doesn't give him, um, I think hits her a couple of times, tells her if he doesn't get, she doesn't give him the passcode to the phone, he's gonna hurt the girl. I don't, I don't know if he checked it there and threw it down or whatever, but uh, eventually he has the little girl and he FaceTimes her back. And by the time he FaceTimes her, he's already hit her with some type of blunt object and she's entirely bloody in the face. And he's hitting and choking her on FaceTime and telling her, this is what happens because all you care about, the only thing you love is that dude. You know, that's not what he said, but that's, uh, and, 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 and he ends up, I guess he's in the car when he's doing it because he ends up going on a 30 mile chase before he's stopped by police. They render aid to the baby, perform CPR, but she later is pronounced dead at the hospital. We're talking a two year old, beautiful little girl. And this clown, because again, doesn't have an awareness of emotional intelligence obviously doesn't have a sense of personal and self identity uh, and so many other things. And it's far too common. We can't just keep saying it's evil. It's an evil act, but I'm not one that believes that the vast majority of us are born evil. There are uh, that 1% that are born psychopaths that literally don't have the neurological, biological, and mental capacity to be to care. They have no conscience. Everybody else develops the capacity for violence, develops the capacity to be oblivious to the pain of others, uh, develops the capacity to lose control and be highly temperamental. All that stuff is developed. To a certain extent, your temperament and all that stuff comes genetically but it's environmentally influenced heavily. And I've talked about this. One of the primary focuses that I've been involved in uh, over the course, I've dealt with everything. If you go back and you look at, out of the 26 books I've done, there are a number of them focusing heavily on uh, a plethora of issues that plague the black community, offering solutions. 
but there are going to be several that I have put a whole lot of emphasis on. Number one, uh, black love, restoring the black family. The others is the other is the need for proper racial socialization for the primary focus of reducing African American adolescent and young adult male violence. Now, there's so much more to why racial socialization is so important for black youth. And I just recently wrote a, a, a new piece on it, just a short article, a couple of thousand words, that focuses on the specifics and the needs and ways to do it and how we do it at Black Man Lead. But let's go and look at this thing. My primary concern here is that this is happening so often now that we're starting to normalize it and it's just evil that's what black men do no that's not what black men do that's what broken black males do when we fail to properly socialize them when they have no sense of racial identity when they have no sense of purpose and understand who they are when they have not been developed when it has not been a focus on developing emotional maturity and emotional intelligence when they have no sense of control of how their emotions function and they allow their emotions to rule their behavior. That's not black manhood. That's a failure to develop black manhood. And it rests on the shoulders primarily of black men, but it also has culpability in the area of black mothers purposely alienating kids from the father, black mothers, you know, doing other things, but primarily men. It's our responsibility to be present, but here's a problem. When we're not present, we create this behavior that's not conducive to pro-social engagement as adults. Guess what happens? We lose a large number of our, our males to prison, another significant number to death, and so we leave this big gap that keeps perpetuating this inability to proper model manhood because the men simply aren't there, especially in the places where they're needed most, where we see the greatest level of violence, we see the greatest level of criminality is in the impoverished areas where we reside. Now, let's not get um, confused here. This type of behavior happens in more upscale more affluent black homes as well. And it's not just a black issue, but I'm concerned with the black community. So I've seen an anesthesiologist, a doctor, uh, a dude in corporate America. I've seen all of that happen with them, black men who had gotten to what they considered to be the end of their ropes and their response to it was, I'm going to kill her or I'm going to kill the kids. There's another group of men who are literally killing kids that aren't theirs. They are getting back at their girlfriends for whatever reason, breaking up with them, not doing something, and they're killing their kids. I am at a certain level baffled at the idea that the way we handle disagreement with our women is to harm our kids or to harm kids of someone else. Men, black men, this is why it's important. Even if for whatever reason you are no longer with the mother and it's not something that you can see happening for whatever reason, and there are times when it's just not doable. Uh, but I also think that we need to develop the capacity and understanding of what it takes to build uh, a relationship because I think we bail too easily. I think we enter too easily. Uh, we don't, because we can bail easily, we don't give consideration to what we're entering into because if I don't like it, I just leave. And that mindset has created an entire couple of generations where the men have been absent and the development of the young black male has been stifled, uh, stunted, and is showing up. And we have a responsibility, men, to fill that gap. I know we need to take care of home first. I get that. 
if I have something that I wish I could have been better at is being more focused at home because I was so busy working on so many things outside of the home. Now, it doesn't mean that I wasn't present. It just means that you can be so embedded in your passion that you can think you're covered at home and you're not. I'm talking about my kids specifically. And I'm being open and transparent. Now, the one thing I am right now, all the way up to my oldest, who is 37, is available. There's none of my kids that can come and say, well, I can't even get to my pop. No, you can get to me. You might not like what I tell you. You not you may not like the guidance. You, you may not like being held to the flame and being held accountable, but you can get to me and I'm always going to be there. Uh, but that's the thing I want us to be first and foremost, men, is present. Not perfect, present. Present with a intentful concern about positively engaging the need to help our children develop. And that's what socialization is about now. For those who don't understand what racial socialization is, it's the double down for ethnic groups outside of Caucasians, but specifically and absolutely necessary for blacks in America. Okay, socialization is what every parent does for their kids, any good parent, any decent parent. It helps them to develop their identity. Uh, their self-image, their self-esteem. It's it's the statements and the behaviors where I'm going to show you love. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to tell you you're beautiful, handsome. I'm going to tell you you're smart. I'm going to tell you that you can do anything you set your mind to. I'm going to tell you that you are extraordinary. All these things. Now, that's what every parent is supposed to do. It and, and, and they're supposed to give the kids the tools. The kids are supposed to be able to see them model behavior. All these things are preparing their child to go out into a world and be uh, successful, be able to rise up and meet the challenges uh, that are simply going to face them. When it comes to blacks, there's a second level to the socialization thing. It's called racial socialization. Why? Because no matter what you tell your child about how beautiful they are, how awesome they are, what they're capable of doing, how gorgeous their hair is, how... how uh, whatever that that, that, that that you see in them that you love, they're smart, they're going to be everything. Mm -hmm. What they're going to do is they're going to go out and there's going to be an, an entire system and environment that's going to move in opposition to what you shared with them. They're going to tell them that their hair is kinky and nappy. They're going to tell them that their nose is too wide. It's going to tell them that they're not smart, that they are on average 15% uh, less intelligent than the average white kid. And they're going to use false data to do it. They're going to create an environment and a system where the kids are just going to be able to, after a while, observe and acknowledge. There are certain things that I don't have access to that that kid does. There are certain things that they're said about that kid that's never said about me. Certain things said about me never said about that kid. And they're going to pay attention. to it. It's in the media. It's on, it, it's on social media. It's in regular media. It's in the movies. It's in everything that you look around. And so what do you do? You tell them first and foremost, hey, uh, uh, most of you have seen this. Hey, you're going to go out there and you're probably going to, have to be two to three times better than the average person that looks like them in order to get it. They are automatically in line for it before you, no matter how much better you are. So you got to be two or three times better, but then it's followed up with. But you know what? You you can be. You have everything in you to thrive in this world. You're going to go out there. But understand, they're going to do this. Understand, they're going to say this. But this is who you are. This is where you come from. This is the stock you built from. See, they're going to only tell you about slavery. But let me tell you about what happened before slavery. Let me tell you about empires and kingdoms. Let me tell you about our history. Let me tell you about the things we created. And you, you have to do that in order to sit up and... And do that. So that's called that, that. That's one model of racial social, socialization. I'm I'm into the multidimensional uh, model of racial socialization, where you 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 empower them through uh, direct engagement. You expose them to literature. You expose them to history. You expose them to other great people. It's important to have the right type of exposure. It's important to have principles and standards. It's imposed. It's important to have a defined definition of who is who. So when it comes to black manhood, there is a specific definition of what black manhood is. There are 11 principles that govern uh, what we teach at Black Man Lead. Uh, it, it goes 11 principles, and it, and it simply goes 
a black man never harms, mistreats, or disrespects a black woman, and this includes females of all ages. A black man takes care of his progeny, which is his offspring. A black man always controls, uh, is uh, has uh, always has control of his emotions. Here's the situation we're dealing with right now. And we talk about understanding how emotions move, because one of the things that, if you're not careful, that 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 is highly invasive in, in, in conversation about manhood growing up is black men don't cry. Black men don't need help. Real men don't, 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 this, this, this. And none of that stuff is true. We do feel. Matter of fact, in order for us to be effective, we have to be able to be tough when necessary. But for the most part, we need to be soft, caring, and have the ability to feel in order to love on our wives, in order to love on our children, in order to be effective in our community. We need to be able to be hard when necessary so that we can defend that community. We can defend our home. We can protect our wives and our children. But we also have to understand that our hardness doesn't apply. To our family. Now we can be stern with our family, but the hardness and abrasiveness was never meant for our family. But we have to also understand that these emotions that tend to come up that make us feel a certain way are not uh, decisive mechanisms. They are indicative mechanisms. What do they mean? When I have a feeling, it's just its only job is to tell me uh, what the current reality is. If I have a feeling of sadness, it means in some way I've experienced a loss or something that takes away my happiness or joy. If I have a feeling of anger, then that means that some way someone has done someone has done something to wrong me or I'm experiencing a situation that I don't feel um, favorable. And all these different emotions tell you a reality. They were never mm -hmm. meant to determine what you do about the reality once you are aware of it. Your emotions should not be governing your behavior. They should be making you aware. And sometimes in the situations like this, his emotion should have told him, she doesn't care for me the way she used to. I need to accept it and move on. I may, what I probably need to do is sit down and ask myself honestly and openly, why? What is it that I could have done? And by the way he's behaving here, it tells me that there's a reason why she has had to let go. This isn't painting her as a superstar that doesn't do anything wrong or whatever. I don't know anything except what I'm seeing here. And what I'm seeing here is he killed a two and a half year old, a two year old baby. That's what I'm seeing. And what I'm saying is at absolutely under no circumstances does anything, can anything anyone does to me make me harm a child or a woman for that matter. But we're talking about a two year old. So it's not enough that I could harm you. I'm going to hurt you by taking the thing you care about the most. And he specifically says when he's FaceTiming her that the only thing you love is that dude. So this is, this is happening to her because of you. No, it's happening to that baby because of you. It's happening to that baby because you didn't develop a sense of self. You've placed all of who you are into someone else. And when it doesn't go right, when you can no longer control her, when you can no, when she's no longer willing to take your abusiveness, because I guarantee you this isn't the first time that the abuse happened. When she's no longer willing to do that, when she finally says, I'm moving on, and you see you can no longer manipulate, control, intimidate, you go to destroy And the, 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 the damage and the danger came from you. Let me tell you something. I've been hurt more than one time. Never has it been in my mind that I'm going to harm the person who, who broke my heart. But you want to know why? It's because I know who I am and I have a standard that's directly associated with my identity. Racial identity is a big part of socialization, understanding who I am, not just as a man, but as a black man. My life is different than any other man on this planet. Uh, I'm not saying that from the position of a victim. I'm saying that from a position of 
of a warrior that I face things that no other man on this planet faces except another. That, there's nobody else that can understand my plight but a black man. But I understand in that also lies my responsibility as a black man is to withstand and stand. It is to carry myself with a certain level of, 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 of respect for myself, for my race, for the women and children and the elderly, and for my responsibility of what I am supposed to do in this world. I understand that a part of my responsibility as a black man is to protect those who cannot protect themselves within my construct, within my social construct. So that means that the elderly, our women and children, and definitely my woman and my children, nothing, no harm is to come to them because my number one responsibility is to protect. We also say a black man works so that he can provide for his family. A black man strives to build wealth for his family and offspring. A black man understands the importance of ownership uh, of businesses and property. It is uh, a black man is always in the state of learning and growing. A black man takes responsibility for his own actions, seeks wisdom. A black man seeks wisdom and knowledge from men in great situations and conditions. A black man abides by a standard of excellence, never settling. A black man never makes excuses for his failures, making the necessary adjustments to overcome them. Notice I didn't say a black man never fails. I said a black man never makes excuses. It doesn't mean that he doesn't look for uh, the reasoning behind why he's where he's at or what has happened. He doesn't use what has happened as an excuse to be there. He makes the necessary adjustments, changes, and see he understands also, based on another principle before that, that his responsibility is to grow, to become, to develop, to be better. And that's what he's focused on. But when you sit up and you see this, this isn't normal. This isn't natural. We have to stop simply saying, oh my God, that's just evil. That's black men, no. That, that's not just happening in black situations. I'm just not in a place where I can be concerned with what's happening in other racial enclaves. They're going to deal with that. They're going to manage that. What I am concerned with is what's happening in my uh, area of existence, the things that I relate to. And there's nothing I relate to more than being a black man. So when I look at this and I see DeAndre Flanagan, has destroyed an entire social construct around him because his family is going to be destroyed. He destroyed that baby. He destroyed the mother of that baby and her family and everyone else who loves them. He took a little piece of, of, of safety, security, and trust out of the black community, and there's not much there in the first place. His life is ruined. And he should be dealt with severely. If it was really truly up to me, that would be something that would be done in-house. Because a message has to be sent that that's unacceptable. And it needs to be sent that we're not going to wait on them to punish you for causing harm in our community. We need to stand up as men and determine a level of what's going to be acceptable, a code of conduct and protocols of punishment. You cannot govern a society without consequence. The idea that we can rest on morals, that morals drive the, the force of nature is ridiculous. Consequence drives the force of nature most there are people with morals there are people who have good moral standing and they live their lives to be good people but you will be surprised the vast majority of people live off of the fear of consequence they behave like they're supposed to they do what they're supposed to and they stay out of trouble but not because 
that's who they are. They stay out of trouble because they don't want to deal with the consequence. It'll be a whole lot of stuff going on if there were no consequences for murder, no consequences for theft, no consequences for all the things. That would be a lot of things. This would be crazy, but consequence governs behavior. And we need to have a, a, a specific response to anyone who harms the elderly, a woman or a child in our community. It needs to be swift. I, I put a link to my latest write-up in the um, description box of this video. Uh, I, I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to read uh, the importance of racial socialization, but definitely when it comes to black men. What we are definitely going to have to push moving forward is emotional intelligence. An ability to understand one's emotions, be aware of one's emotions, be aware of how one's emotions is impacting you at any given time, and also how to manage those emotions. It's immensely important. It's a part of natural development, but we aren't seeing it. In so many of these instances, everybody's get, getting into their feelings and then they're behaving uh, in ways unimaginable. Uh, now we have a mother devastated. Her life is never going to be the same. We have a little two-year-old, gorgeous little baby. And just gone. Because a black man could not manage his emotions. Again, I want to be very clear here because we are in a place now where black men don't want to be held accountable. And the moment that you hold them accountable, the first thing they do is point to black women. So let me be clear here. This isn't a statement of release as far as black women are concerned. There are a lot of issues and I've touched on both sides. I'm not into giving passes to either side. I'm into accountability. And here's the thing, no matter what a woman does outside of trying to harm you, you have no business harming her. There's absolutely nothing you can do to justify harming a child in any way, shape, form, or fashion. The one place that our children and our women should feel most safe is in our presence. We can't look at intimate partner homicide as being the second leading cause of death for black females from 15 to 44 and, and pretend there's not a problem and start pointing the finger. I'm responsible for my decisions. I'm 100%. I'm the moment that I can start deflecting the responsibility I have as a man on what someone else is doing, I have totally lost control of my life. And I'm moving around at the whim of other people's behavior and how other people act and how other people treat me. I'm responsible for the decisions I make in this life, good, bad, or indifferent. And it's up to me to develop the capacity to make the best possible. <laughs> We have work to do. Uh, I'm sending um, prayers, love, light, and positive energy to the family of Zavaya Marie, the little two-year-old, to Kirsten uh, Watson, uh, the mother of that baby, and to their families. I'm lifting uh, them up and I'm praying and hoping that you will do the same thing. This is absolutely crazy But this is where we're at and so I am going to uh, Get off of here, but I I ask you to look into uh, that, that 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 link that I posted to understand why we need to be working on this, why it's so important. On that note, I'm out of here. And as I always say, you know that we are 
in need of your support. So if you believe in what we're doing, show some love, show some support. The information is in the description box. On that note, I am out of here. Take care. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.